lioness and um, I'm pretty sweaty when it comes to the belt buckles and a lot of people have been requesting that I show um, you know how I've completed all of my belt buckles throughout the years these are the only ones that I have left to do and as you can see most of them are almost completed I just have to kind of buckle down and put in the work no pun intended <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and we'll start um, with the naturalist I'll just go right in order um, this one's self-explanatory, you just reach rank 20. Uh, taking samples from legendary animals. This one will kind of come as you complete your compendium. Um, my personal way of doing it is um, because I'm working on the 20 fully stamped. I sample everything in free roam and if I need supplies for my camp, I just go and kill something from the Harriet missions because those are guaranteed legendaries and the ones in free room aren't as guaranteed. The fully researched 90 unique animals, um, that comes with completing your compendium as well. You just have to complete like um, every single thing, track, photograph, kill, skin, sedate sample, etc. Uh, using Harriet's tonics. This one I haven't completed yet just because her tonics are freaking expensive. Um, so how I've been really getting these is I'll do, like I'll take a tonic or whatever for her daily challenges. Or if I have a friend who needs a picture of a specific animal and I've got it sedated, I'll revive it for them. Other than that, I don't use her tonics because, again, they're expensive. Um... So for a lot of the things in here, I'm going to be referencing the interactive Red Dead Redemption map. Um, and I'll be sure to include a link um, to that map in my description. Um, for all of these categories, farmland, desert, wetland, mountain and grassland, and forest and river, I have the spawns memorized just because I've been playing since day one, and I also played story, so I have the spawns memorized. Um, but you can use that map if you're not as familiar. What I do is, because um, you have to turn in 20 of each, I hoard samples because you can hold at least 10 samples on you at a time. And you can't like sell them all at once, you have to sell one sample at a time, stamp the set, and then sell another sample, stamp the set, once you have that whole thing filled in. Um, so it gets a little tedious, but that's how I do it. I basically just hoard samples, and I ended up completing these in like maybe a week or two. It wasn't too difficult. Um, it's just time consuming. For Moonshiner, again, reaching rank 20, self-explanatory. The bootlegger missions will come up, or come along with reaching rank 20. I'm just reading here. So, becoming intoxicated by your own moonshine, if you just have like a strong moonshine ready to go, especially if it has a flavor to it, it'll... Sometimes if it doesn't have a flavor, I found that it didn't count for me. But basically... All I did was I became intoxicated by, like, my berry cobbler moonshine or whatever. I went and drank some coffee or splashed my face in the water bucket until, um, like, the haze on my screen went away. And then I just did it again. I rinsed and repeated. Uh, earning cash from selling moonshine. All you have to do is sell your moonshine. That comes again with ranking it up. The moonshiner story comes with ranking it up to rank 20. Make and drink 10 different moonshine recipes. So you unlock those as you progress through the moonshiner. But the only one that you don't is the poison poppy. And that one um, you get through a random encounter. And you can find those random encounters on the map that I'll link. Um, but the thing with that one is it's a little weird. 
So, like, if I stumble upon that random encounter, I can kill the NPCs there, but if I open the chest, since I already have it, it'll say that I can take a reward, but it won't give me a reward. But if I touch that chest, then someone else can't come and get the recipe, like one of my posse mates or whatever. So if you find it or someone else finds it, make sure they don't interact with that chest. Or if you're trying to give the recipe to someone, make sure they don't interact with that because then they will lose out on it. Playing a full song or playing a song with a full band of players. I just threw up an LFG for this one because I just wanted to get it done and it was kind of a pain in the ass. Because people get impatient. But if you have a full posse, just everyone needs to play um, in the band. Everyone has to be on an instrument. And then you have to sit there and kind of play for like 30 seconds. And then the game will register it for you. Easy. Serve moonshine to players at the bar. Um, you know, if you have a full posse, just bring them on down and serve them some alcohol. You just have to serve it at the bar. Make sure they take it and drink it. And... Um, honestly, if you have a full posse, this goes by pretty quickly. Bounty Hunter. So, reaching rank 20 in the Bounty Hunter role, again, pretty easy. Turning in living bounty targets, and then turning in dead bounty targets. If you're a solo player, how I normally do this is, is if I'm doing a single bounty, or I discover someone in free roam, like just a random bounty that just spawned up, what I do is if they're single, I turn them in alive, but if they're more than one, two, four, six, eight, whatever, I turn them all in dead. I just throw, kill them all, I throw them all in my wagon, and that's how I do it. But if you're with a posse, then it's a little bit easier to turn them in dead. Um, the player bounties, I have <laughs> been the bane of my existence. Um, so the only way that the player bounties will count for you is if they're alive when you turn them in. And if you're like me, and you have a posse that just loves to kill, it's quite frustrating so um, this one I don't really see myself getting anytime soon even though I do want it because I think the belt buckle looks pretty neat um, a legendary bounty you get those from the bounty board where you click on the tab that says legendary bounty you um, you keep replaying it on a higher and higher difficulty to unlock five star difficulty which can be pretty hard and you can't die so that's how you complete those. It's best done with a team. Turning in a bounty target from every bounty board. This is going to be up to you to keep track of which bounty boards you do. So me personally, I start at one end of the map, normally Tumbleweed, and I work my way through. But the game's not going to keep track of it for you. It'll just tell you, you know, 5 out of 13 or 6 out of 13 or whatever. So you need to keep track of where you're doing your bounties. 10 infamous bounty posters. So those are um, the very last one on each bounty board. And they, um, they have different parts to them. They're kind of like a legendary bounty, just not, you don't have to go through all the cutscenes and stuff normally. Um, so basically, I start my way at one end of the map, usually Tumbleweed, and I work my way up. But you have to keep progressing through them. So you have to let them go through their cooldown, which I think is like maybe 15 minutes to an hour. I don't know. I don't really keep track. And then you have to go back and you have to do it again. Normally, there's between three and five parts to each infamous bounty. So you have to complete it fully for each bounty poster. So that one will take you a little bit, um, but it goes by pretty quickly in order to progress through the ranks. And then this one's just for reaching rank 30. And this one just infinitely resets. And I don't really think it gives you an actual belt buckle. I didn't notice it in my inventory. But that's just through getting XP. But it gives you, like, I think, like, so much. I don't remember how much gold, but I know it's, like, 100 bucks. So I'm not going to complain. Collecting. Um, all of this is going to be found in the collector's map that I'll include. Um, finding the collectibles, this belt buckle is just included when you're completing the sets. Um, 
tarot cards, wildflowers, alcohol, bird eggs, and that's it. Those are all on set spawns. You'll be able to find those and complete those sets easy peasy. But like jewelry, heirlooms, um, arrowheads, coins, and fossils. The sets are randomized now because people were just grinding the ever-loving mercy out of the collector rules and just <laughs> getting a ton, ton of XP and money. Um, so their way of nerfing it, it was that they randomized the spawns. Like, for instance, I actually just completed my fossils yesterday. Um, so basically what it is, is when you go to dig up a fossil or a coin or whatever else is randomized, you get a random pick. That, so that means that you could potentially get 10 of the same fossil in one day. Um, and it can get pretty frustrating if you're just trying to work on the belt buckles like me and not grind out money. So that's why it took me a couple months to actually complete. Um, the coins and the heirlooms and the arrowheads I all completed before they randomized so it wasn't as frustrating. But the fossils definitely did not make me a happy camper. Madame Nazar's weekly list comes out each week. You can find it on the, the map that I'm going to put a link to. And um, basically all you have to do is you just have to turn in those collectibles. Um, you can do one a day of the same set and it'll count. You just need to do it 20 times. Pretty easy, depending on the set. Trader, again, rank 20, self-explanatory. Earning cash from trading, you get that as you progress through the rolls because you have to sell your stuff. Complete resupply missions. This one's definitely a little bit time consuming because the trading takes a while. I think it takes crypts like two hours and every half hour you have to do a resupply mission. So that's why my numbers aren't as outstanding as the time would reflect. I also did take a year off approximately. So sell goods to buyers um whenever you sell your goods you sell like a certain amount of goods so as you sell your goods to the buyer you know this this will go up um as you can see i have this maxed out and i have this maxed out so is if you just sell you're fine making stews at camp um this it doesn't matter what you make like you can make you know a high tier or low tier stew or you can make a superior or Crips' special stew i would obviously recommend doing the superior or the special because uh, the little you can, it'll you know give you the the gold cores that you're looking for and it'll it'll really help you in the long run especially if you're a little bit of a low level and you die a lot. Sell to 15 different buyers. Um, this is just different sell points at the map. You'll you'll get that as you sell your goods. Just pitch your camp in different locations. Honestly, how I pitch my camp is, since I'm working on um, completing my legendary animal sets, I pitch my camp close to that legendary animal spawn so I can keep riding through the spawn and trying to get the animal to spawn for me. So if you sell in different locations, um, you'll eventually get this and plus it's good to travel around the map it's a gorgeous map you should enjoy it sharpshooter oh goodness i have every single one of these and they took me the better part of a year to get so for every weapon there's going to be a headshot so killing enemies with a pistol um revolver repeater rifle shotgun and sniper rifle and bow there's all going to be headshots that go along with it as you can see here um so if you're not good with headshots if you're not good with shooting pvp whatever that's okay you can do this on npcs um all you have to do is um 
Like, if you're really just not good at the flicking motion to get the headshot, what you can do is you and a friend can hogtie, like, an entire hideout or roadblock or whatever and just do the headshots that way when the enemies are incapacitated and tied up. That is an option for you. Um, I totally get it. Sometimes people are visually impaired or they have other ailments that don't make them able to really get the headshot, so that's understandable. So, killing enemies with a melee weapon and killing enemies with a throwing weapon. Um, so, both of these I actually got through executions. Basically, all you do is you either have, like, your throwing weapon, like a tomahawk, or your melee weapon, like a knife in your hand. You run up to a character, and you can press B, and when you do that, it throws them on the ground, and you have an option to press right trigger and execute them. Or, like, you can come up from behind and press the trigger, and it'll just, like, execute them. It'll put them in an execution animation. So that's how I got those. The throwing weapons especially I did executions with because I'm really stingy and I don't want to lose my tomahawk. Um, you know, if I paint someone with a tomahawk or whatever and I lose it, then I'm going to be irritated. So that's how I did mine. As you can see, <clears throat> I'm not big on sniping. Um, bow headshots. Killing enemies from horseback. Honestly, it's really easy. I, I don't have an issue killing people on horseback as you can see because I have that maxed out um honestly I tell people a lot of times stay on your horse because your horse will act as a meat shield for you most of the times your horse will take a bullet for you so even if you're not that strong at fighting if you're on your horse at least your horse can take that bullet for you and don't revive your horse it's a waste of money just just shoot it and call another one um <laughs> I mean, your horse will forgive you. <laughs> I promise. So, killing players from behind. Um, it's pretty simple. You just kill players from behind. But I want to say that this counts for NPCs now. You can do this on NPCs. They just have to be looking not at you. Um, this one I get a lot just because normally, especially now, people like to hide with their Carcano rifle. And so they're so busy looking through a scope trying to tag my posse mate that I can just run up to them and just pop them in the back of the head with a shotgun. It's pretty easy. Executions, again, um, you just run up to them and press B or like you can come up behind and press right trigger, put them in the execution animation. Each individual weapon has its own execution. The bows is pretty neat. Um, if you do it from behind, your character will like, um, force the, the person on their knees and stick the arrow in their ear and kill them. It's pretty neat. Hat shots, um, are actually a really good way to, um... Practice your headshots, because normally when you're shooting someone in the head, if you miss a little bit, it'll knock their hat off. But if you're working on your headshots or whatever, normally the hat shots will just come hand in hand with it. You really want to get that flicking motion down. It's not too difficult once you, you know, just build up the muscle memory, I promise. Kill enemies using Deadeye. Um... Again, if you're not strong at PvP, really good cards to use would either be like Focus Fire or um, a Moment to Recuperate. Um, because Focus Fire makes you do more damage and a Moment to Recuperate, you heal over time. And it's honestly saved my life a bunch of times. Um, a lot of people, you know, only use Paint It Black and they use it kind of like as a crutch. And if you can get good without using the Paint It Black, it'll make you ten times better at PvP. Because a lot of people, if you took away their Paint It Black, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. Killing two players in a single dead eye use. Again, you're not going to want to use Paint It Black for this one. You're either going to want to use um, Focus Fire or a Moment to Recuperate or Quite an Inspiration. I think I prefer Quite an Inspiration to a Moment to Recuperate because it heals your entire group. Um... If you're going to use paint it black, normally it'll knock you it knocks you out of dead eye like if you're just using it for flicking or whatever. So I find that um, a moment to recuperate and focus fire are a little bit more reliable. Um, you can use slippery for this too. 
Um, but it's, I don't know. I just don't, I don't really like what they did to Slippery. Um, so the best way to do this is probably just to go into the showdowns where kills don't really, you know, matter that much if you're just trying to work on belt buckles. You know, it's not like someone's going to chase you through lobbies or whatever, or get pissed off because, you know, you shot them in a shooting game. <laughs> Kill 10 enemies in a single dead I use. So um, how I actually did this was I took an entire gang hideout and I hogtied them and I put them all in a pile. And then I just went into Deadeye. I think I honestly had Slippery on for this one. And I just chucked a stick of dynamite at them and killed them all. And that's how I got mine. But you, of course, you can do this with a shotgun or a Maxim gun or, you know, any weapon, really. Assists. So an assist is when um, you are shooting an enemy, but you don't kill them and someone else gets the kill. It'll give you credit for an assist. It'll give you 5 XP. So um, that one that one just comes, but I think it only counts on players um, for this one. I think it only counts on players, but I could be wrong. They may have changed it. Again, I'm an OG beta player, so a lot of the stuff I did during beta, but... Um, it, it's all pretty much the same still. Kill three enemies with a sniper rifle headshot in 10 seconds. Okay, so this one, again, if you're not if you're not good with headshots, just hog tie some people and um, just, just shoot them that way. Or, you know, if you have a group of friends that's nice enough and wants to volunteer that to you, do it that way. Or you can go and do it the, <clears throat> like, the... The real way, I guess you want to call it. You can go into the showdowns or free room and whatever. <clears throat> the only danger with free room is, um, like, they have to be red. So you can't just go out and um, harass some players or NPCs. They have to be a red blip on your map. Kill one player with a bow from 100 meters. So how I did this one is... Um, I pulled out my bow, obviously, and then I backed up until my reticle bead on the player um, was, like, gray, because normally it'll be red. I just backed up until it turned gray, signifying that, like, I was out of range or whatever, and then I just shot them that way. Um, you can use Paint It Black for this one. Paint It Black gives the bow, like, an obnoxious amount of range. <laughs> it's, like, not even fair. <laughs> Kill 50 enemies consecutively with the same weapon. So for this one, I actually just went into Blackwater and I just like harassed the cops. Um, I just, I had my one revolver and each cop that came, I just shot him with it. And that's also how I got this belt buckle. Kill six enemies with a revolver without reloading. So you have to get perfect headshots on this one, unfortunately. If you're going to do it the cop way. If not, you could just do it the hideout way that I referenced a little while ago. But this is a pretty neat belt buckle. I like the way this one looks. Um, okay, combat. Enemies killed. This one will come, you know, just as you're getting your other belt buckles. I have this one maxed out forever ago. Kill enemies by firing from the hip. So all you have to do for this one is um, just pull right trigger until, you know, they die. Don't touch the left trigger because when you ADS, it doesn't count as a hip fire. Um, if you kill enemies with a maxim gun, it, that also counts as firing from the hip. So, um, yeah, just don't touch left trigger. Run down enemies with a coach. So this one was a lot of fun. Um, what I did is I uh, went to a hideout and hogtied them all. And then I lined them up in the road. And this was also back in the day, you know, when we didn't have our own wagons. So I went out to the road and I flagged down a wagon, stole it from some guy, some NPC. And we did Red Dead Bowling. Um, I just took the wagon and I ran over the enemies, all the guys from the hideout. And... Um, I did this until they all died. They it won't kill them all instantly cuz like some some of the dead bodies like absorb the blow or whatever, so you're going to have to come back and kind of run over them a couple times, but it was a lot of fun to do with a group of people. Trample enemies to death with a horse. Um 
So when they're tied up, if you tie someone up, it doesn't really, like, kill them all that well. So, like, you either have to down them or, um, you know, shoot them a couple times so they're weak and then run them over with your horse. Um, it takes a little bit of work, but once you get the rhythm down, you'll be okay. Killing enemies with fire. So... <laughs> This one, again, I just tied up a hideout and I put them all in a big pile and then I lit them all on fire because when they're, like, the fire will spread through the bodies. So, um, it, it was pretty fun to do. So, it was just kind of like lighting a big candle. Countering while brawling. So, when you're in a fist fight with someone, um, you press B to punch, but you press X to counter. So what countering is, or what countering consists of, is your character will hold up like their, their arm or whatever to block the blow. But you can't just sit there and spam the block. It won't count as a counter. You have to press X and block their blow, and then press B to deliver a punch. So what a counter is, is you block and then punch. That's called a counter. Or um, it's kind of like parrying and sword play. So just don't sit there and spam X because it won't get you anywhere except you'll run out of stamina. Kill enemies after you have died. So this one isn't one that I really like farmed or whatever. Um, basically, if you have like mediocre internet, it's a really good way. Like you'll find that you'll get this one a lot. Or... Um, like, I think the biggest way that I got this one is in the showdowns because I would be working on someone and I would down them and then, like, another someone else on their team would just shoot me in the back. So I would be dead and the other guy would be going down so then he would die too. So that's how that worked. Like, I was killing people after they died. Or sometimes, um, like, if you have latency, you can do it with dynamite too. There's no really, like method to this one it just kind of goes up to like internet and um internet and chance for the most part kill enemies with mounted weaponry this is a maxim gun at a hideout um so just just find yourself a hideout and hop on the maxim gun it it's a lot of fun for sure for sure Kill enemies while intoxicated. So, um, actually, I believe how I did this one is I, um, I combined these two belt buckles. So what I did is I went to a hideout, I tied everyone up, I put them all in a pile, I got drunk, and then I lit them on fire. Um, killing enemies while intoxicated is pretty rough because you have to free aim. Like, if you're going to do it with a gun, you have to free aim, but your character's also wobbling around. So it's really difficult to do. So, this was, like, the soundest method that I could find. Killing enemies who incapacitated slash killed the posse member. So, basically, it has to be an enemy who downed or killed your posse member. Um, and all you have to do is just kill them. I got this through PvP. Killing enemies as a coach passenger. This one I got, like, back in beta days when, you know, you, like, stole wagons all the time. Um, so really all you have to do is ride shotgun and protect the wagon and kill enemies. This one, um, you can, you can do it with like selling trader goods long distance too. Hunting. Killing animals. That one's easy. Harriet's gonna hate you. Kill flying birds. Uh, okay, so this one, obviously they have to be in flight. So just make sure that they're in the sky and not on the ground. Killing flying birds with an arrow. What I did is I went over to Le Gras, where like the herons are, because they're a little bit more sluggish um, when taking off, especially if you're not that good. Like if your vision's not that good or your reaction time's not that good, like me. Um, I just waited until they lifted off just a smidgen and shot them and killed them with an arrow. Paint it black will be your friend with this one as well. Kill two animals in an explosion. So how I did this is actually with fish. So basically, you go anywhere in, um, like, at the water's edge. 
and you can see little bubbles where the fish are or like little ripples in the water and you just chuck a stick of dynamite in there. I maxed that one out pretty quickly. This one was the bane of my existence just because like I'm not really a bow user. But as a low level, you're going to want to kill things or kill enemies with the bow. So if you're working on your bow headshots and stuff, just um, roll with the bow. Uh, and any small animal you see, frog, toad, rabbit, muskrat, raccoon, possum, badger, whatever, just shoot it. You don't even need to skin it. You don't even need to go and get your arrow. Just shoot it. And it eventually it'll all add up. As you can see, I finished this belt buckle and I never look back. Kill large animals with a knife. Since they added mercy kills in the game, it's a little bit easier. All you have to do is like shoot a deer in the ass and down it and go over and stab it. But like another way that you can do it is you can also lasso deer. Um, not the pronghorn. Well, I mean, you can lasso the pronghorn, but it's really difficult to do because they're so quick. But like you can lasso a deer, a sheep, um, any like medium sized, smaller animal. You can't lasso big stuff like bison. But what you do is you um, throw the lasso on them and then you can walk over to them and you like stab them with your knife. Collecting animal parts, you just get this from skinning, skinning things. Um, it's really good to fill up your satchel with just a bunch of random parts anyway, just so you have it. Killing animals from a moving train. So this one goes hand in hand with traveling with miles on the train. So basically you just want to sit on the train and just kill any animal you see, like, at all. Kill 100 types of animal. You'll get that as long as you just progress through the map and you progress through your compendium. Killing animals who incapacitated or killed a posse member. So, um, how I did this one is I went over to the swamps, and I had a friend who was generous enough to just let the alligators eat her, but after a while, like, after a couple kills, the alligators won't be as interested in eating her. Um, I think, I think the game coding just wants to show you a little mercy or whatever, so what she had to do is she had to walk up to them and press B to stomp on them, and then she ran away, and the alligators would chase her, and, um eat her and also after you kill so many animals like in a row or whatever the game will stop spawning them in for a little bit to prevent you from farming so um you might have to just like circle back to the area after a while catch 15 types of fish you can look up a fishing map and fish fishing locations um and all you have to do is just catch the fish I also like to keep a pocket full of, like, the fish meat and stuff because, like, I have everything crafted in my inventory, so I just like to have stuff on me. Skin legendary animals. I'm still working on this one because Harriet's an emotional terrorist. Um, but basically all I do is I just take the missions from her and I skin the animals in there for my camp. That's all I really do. Um, I don't kill legendaries in Free Roam just because their samples are a little bit like of more value to me personally survivalist picking herbs um again fill up your satchel with just herbs fill it up and then sell it to the doctor um there's a belt buckle for that too and also <clears throat> pick carrots for your horse it's it there's nothing better to feed your horse than carrots and they're free so that's how i've really maxed this out is most of these are just carrots at least two of them are carrots. <laughs> Tasting herbs. Um, just taste one of each type of herb in your satchel. There's going to be 20 that you got to taste. Crafting items. Um, again, fill up, your, fill up your satchel. Skin animals. Pick the herbs. Craft every different type of like minty gamey. Oregano venison. Or thyme big game. Craft all of it craft all of it and eventually this will all come to you make your tonics fill up your satchels you learn unique crafting recipes so these are the recipes that like you learn from the fence um these outlaw passes have made it great because most of these are just given to you for free me i had to buy them <laughs> back in the day so that one's really easy too and cook meat types again Go out, kill skin stuff, and cook it. 
That's all you gotta do. You can cook it with herbs and stuff. Fill up your satchel. Crime. Okay. Lasso enemies from horseback and hogtie them. So, actually how I did this is I just went out on the road and I found some random NPC that was all by his lonesome. I pointed my gun at him to turn him red because they have to be red because they have to be an enemy. And then, um... I lassoed him while I was still on my horse, and then got off the horse, and hogtied him. And then I'd cut him loose, and I'd do it again. And that's how I ended up getting this one. You can also get these from doing bounties, like a normal human being. But back when I did this belt buckle, there weren't bounties. <sighs> Dragging an enemy with a lasso from horseback. This one's a bit of a drag. No pun intended. So, um, what I did is I went up to, um, Roanoke Ridge, up where that, the widow's cabin is, and I did the same thing. I found an NPC on his lonesome, I pointed my gun at him to turn him red, and I lasted him, and I started dragging him, and I had my horse go at a slow enough pace, so the pace that I found is I hold A. And I just push forward and my horse will go. It'll drag the enemy and he'll scream for a while. And then it'll knock him out. He'll turn like an X on the map like you think he's dead. But if you point your gun at him, you'll see that your reticle is still red. So he's still alive. And I just dragged him around. The, the miles in this game are ridiculous. I'm going to warn you now. I dragged that guy from the widow's cabin up in Roanoke Ridge down to... Um, the, the, the sea of, uh, Corundo or Corona or whatever by Tumbleweed. And it was only like eight miles. It was crazy. So this one's definitely going to take you a while, a while, a while. Um, survival wanted level for 120 minutes. So this one is going to be given to you. As you can see, I've already maxed it out by you completing these other belt buckles. Um, so by spending time in jail, winding up in jail, and evading the bounty hunters. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shoot a lot of cops and get a big, fat bounty. Because for every dollar of your bounty is one second in jail. So you need 20 $60 bounties in order to max out this belt buckle. I've been working on this one for a week, and I've only got five minutes to show for it. And it's not fun. Um, you'll, you'll get this belt buckle just by working on this belt buckle. So how you end up in jail is you rack up your $60 bounty. I mean, it doesn't have to be $60. I just like even numbers. You rack up your $60 bounty. And when the bounty hunters come for you, if they're NPCs, um, what you can do is if you don't have a weapon, you have to put your weapon away, and you can go up to them and you can surrender to them. When you surrender to them, they'll take you to jail and you spend time in jail. But if players come for you, just fucking pray to God they're not a dummy and they're not going to shoot you. So you're just going to have to sit there and let them tie you up and take you into jail themselves. So, like, if you can find a way, or, like, a friend that'll do the poker table private lobby with you, do it that way. Because it's going to get tedious. Um, evading bounty hunters, you just have to escape the bounty hunters a hundred times. I found that the magic number for my bounty to evade them is $20, because they'll come frequently, but they're not too, too difficult to beat. But you're going to want to take potent health cures, and you're going to want to have a gold health core at least, because they're, they're tough. And if they kill you, then they take your money and you have nothing to show for it. Um, losing a wanted level a hundred times, just go into like... Blackwater or whatever, shoot someone, get a wanted level, run away. Go back and do it again. It's really easy to do. Really easy. But evading bounty hunters, winding up in jail, and spending time in jail are going to be really tedious and difficult. Especially with the way that they have it now with the player bounties. It's definitely 
been um, testing, to say the least. Travel. Speaking of testing, traveling by train. Lord have mercy, did this belt buckle take me forever? Um, so, <clears throat> back when I did this belt buckle, there was no train in Tumbleweed, but, um, there's, so what I did is I would hop on the train in Valentine, and this was back when, like, sometimes the bounties would put you in a private lobby, so I got lucky, and I did all my, my train on a private lobby, just because I didn't want, like, another player messing with me, um, so I did, I hopped on the train, and I just went AFK, you know, I'd move my character around, and she'd ride the train, I did this for a week, that's, that's how long it took me to um, get this belt buckle finished. Because one loop around the map is about only eight miles on that train. And it takes the train about a half an hour. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Not fun. <laughs> um, traveling on foot. So you just have to run around. You can't run around in circles. It doesn't really, like, I don't know. It doesn't really register that well if you run around in circles. So just, like, run from Blackwater to Valentine. Or you'll just get it throughout time. Like, how I have. Traveling by canoe. Okay, so I'll show you the map for this one. Um, so what I did here... is I picked up a canoe like over in here because you can find them over in here and what I did is I paddled from like here all the way down to like here but you have to really hug the shoreline because if you go out into this territory it'll automatically sink you and if you come over into like here what it'll do is it'll, like, drain your stamina and it'll, like, insta-kill you. So, you really just kind of want to, like, go through here. And this is probably, like, five miles. Uh, this whole little route right here. Um, don't, don't go over into here. So, like, from here around the thing to, like, here. Um. And you're going to need a lot of cocaine gum for it as well. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, that one was also super tedious because I couldn't, like, AFK for it. Um, so, not as fun. Uh, traveling by horse. This one you'll just get by playing the game. I maxed this one out for Virgo. This one you'll get just through doing the belt buckles as well. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Jumped from a horse to a moving train. So this one's actually pretty easy because the train goes super slow. So um, what you do is you ride up alongside the train and you... Um, You know, you just press X, and you'll hop on the train, and then once your character gets up, your horse will normally be riding right along the train if you whistle for it to follow, so you can just press X and jump back on your horse, and just volley back and forth. Ride on horseback from Strawberry to Valentine, or Valentine to Strawberry in 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, this is pretty easy to do on any kind of horse if you just want to set a little timer for you. I didn't take any shortcuts or anything. I just rode. It was really easy. This one, I took shortcuts for this one. This one, I, I cut a little a little tight. Um, basically, I just rode straight on through. And eventually, you know, um, we made it. Coulter to Adler's Ranch. This one you're going to want to take the roads for because moving around in the snow sucks. Um, you won't make it if you try to take a shortcut with this one because the snow just slows your horse down so much. 
traveling by coach. This one, you just want to drive or ride for. It doesn't really matter. Um, because you can get the, the coach passenger for this one. So, um, drive, ride. <laughs> that one's really easy. It was a lot easier back when, like, the stranger missions were a thing. Because it was more wagon revolving. But you can still do it. Visit every town. Again, this one you're going to want to keep track of yourself because the game won't keep track of it for you. It'll just, uh, it'll just say, you know, 6 out of 12 or whatever. And same with the train stations. Trade. Um, <coughs> same as the, the train stations. Just keep track of what you're visiting. Um... The map that I'll, I'll link has the shops available for you to look at, too. So, it'll be really easy to keep track of with that as well. Purchase consumable items. What I do is basically I just go into my catalog and I, um, I buy everything. Like, I buy the max of everything, whether it be worms or tonic or meat or whatever, because I have the money to burn, so I just... I just bought a bunch of random stuff, and it maxed it out for me. Same with the clothing items. Like, as they release new stuff, I just, uh, I just bought it. Like, I bought one of each, and eventually I, I got this belt buckle. And in doing this belt buckle, I ended up getting this belt buckle. And same with this belt buckle. Or, or this one. Um, if you buy stuff, it'll it'll register. Sell an item to three shop types. So that would be the butcher, the fence, and the doctor. Um, sell meat to the butcher, herbs to the doctor, and jewelry to the fence. Um, this one's really easy to do. You just go out and pick stuff. Especially in Valentine because there's a ton of herbs there. And then you can sell it to him. Um, back in the beta days, this actually used to be a way to make money. That's how poor we were. Earn 100 gold nuggets. You can get this from doing bounties, stranger missions. Um, I'm not 100% sure if uh, daily challenges count because I got this forever ago, but I'm going to assume it would. Collect items from your delivery box. If you buy stuff from your catalog and just pick it up from your delivery box and camp, You'll get this one. Animal products to a butcher. So this one kind of conflicts with the trader a little bit. But again, I got this one in the beta days. Um, when like this was actually the only way to make money. Uh, so like go fishing. Sell the fish to the butcher. Teeth, toenails, skins, meat, whatever. Just sell it to the butcher. Um, you can also, if I mean, if you're really, really cheap, you can buy meat in the catalog and sell, sell it to the butcher, too. Valuables to the fence. Um, you're going to want to look up the, um, jewelry locations on the map because there's a bunch of little, like, um, places on the map that'll, uh, have jewelry and stuff in it. And, um, then you can go and sell those to the fence or you can get them off of looting dead bodies. So, either way. But that's how I did mine. Drink in every saloon. Um, you're going to want to keep track of this one. But all you have to do is go to the saloon. Order a drink. And then drink it. Own 10 unique legendary animal garments. So you have to find a legendary animal. Either in free room or through Harriet. Kill it. Skin it. Sell it to Gus. And then buy the coat. Reach Maximum Dishonor. I got this one when I was um, killing cops for my bounties. Um, if you just kill them and kill them and kill them and kill them, your, your honor will just go way, way down. And eventually you'll reach max. Uh, reaching Maximum Honor, you get by making good choices, turning the bounties in alive, helping people in need, petting your horse, feeding your horse, stuff like that. Um, I'm normally really high honor. Uh, because, like, even killing and skinning stuff gets you honor. So, really easy. 
treasure maps. Um, you either need to find these out in free roam, pinned to a tree, or loot them off of bodies. And then all you have to do is uh, take the map and go and find the treasure. Looting enemies. All you have to do is loot bodies. I maxed this one out forever ago. Collect 16 tier 3 ability cards. They make this really easy now with the outlaw passes. Um, all you have to do is buy the ability card and level it all the way up. You can normally do this for free now. Me, I paid for every single one of mine. <laughs> complete daily challenges. All you have to do is complete 100 of these. Um, it can be singles. You don't have to have a streak or anything. Just a daily challenge. Complete all seven daily challenges. Um... So these are for the general. In the general tab, you have to complete all of them. Doesn't matter what they are. Whether it's getting kills and showdowns or skinning stuff or whatever. You have to just complete the whole list. And if you you can't get one, just do the next days. Weekly streaks. Um, so if you log in and uh, just do one daily challenge and keep up your streak for 20 weeks, you'll get this. Complete a 28 day streak. So you just have to keep it up for 28 days. It's really easy. Complete all nine daily roll challenges. I'm still working on this one because I only found out about this not too long ago. Um, so there's general challenges and then there's daily roll challenges. Um, you can only complete nine out of the roll challenges. Um, so, like, you don't have to do them all, which is really nice. So, basically, you just have to complete nine of these challenges. And then you'll eventually, um, get them all. But you just have to do, like, it 20 times for the most part. That's really all that consists of, which can be a little tedious if you're not into the rolls as much as I am anymore. Because I've got them all maxed out, but... Horse. Achieve maximum level bond with your horse. Um, that's self-explanatory. Unique horse breeds. Uh, honestly, it's just like any horse that you own. It's not anything too crazy. Um, as long as it's like a roll horse or like one of the more superior horses. Foxtrotter, Turkoban, Thoroughbred... Criollo, Claude Ruber, doesn't matter, you know, and it's, it's good to have more than, like, three horses in your stable anyway, just because of the fact that, like, if one dies, you know, you always have a backup. Surviving a fall of 10 meters with your horse, honestly, I just started jumping off of cliffs for this one, and, um, eventually, you know, we came out on top. <laughs> My horse wasn't too happy with me, but we came out on top, eventually. Um, 10 meters isn't as high as you think it is, though, I promise. So, um... Spend time as a posse leader. This is 100 real-world hours, so... Just run missions, run bounties, make friends... And do the same as a posse member. Pick up an LFG or whatever. It doesn't really matter what you do. Um, just It's it's just going to take time. That's really all it is. Reviving posse members. I'm surprised I don't have this one. Because I feel like I'm always picking my friends up. But um, if you, know, you guys don't really go down all that much. What you can do is you can find someone to volunteer as tribute. Turn on friendly fire. And just, like, shoot them in the leg with a varmint rifle until they go down and then pick them back up again. That is something that's available to you to do. So, what assists are... Is, say, you're, um, you're shooting a player or whatever, and your posse member gets the kill, you'll get an assist. And that's what posse assists are. Um, they're... 
I honestly forgot to reset this one, so that's why I only have one. I just reset it as I was going through my belt buckles. But they're pretty easy to come by, assists, if you like to PvP a lot. Passy versus challenges. Um, so passy versus challenges are um, in the passy menu here. I'll show you. Team infighting, infighting, racing, hunt the leader, biggest fish contest, bird shooting, herb picking. So these are contests. And then all of these are like versus. So, um, hunt the leader though. What hunt the leader does is it puts your entire posse on the map and it'll prompt other people to come and try and kill you. So just be careful with that one. But the infighting or the races or the contests, those are all really fun and um, easy. Free roam. So doing stranger missions from the different characters, whether it be Trelawney, Sean, the Adlers, Alden, um, oh, I can't remember his name, Blind Bob or whoever, no. No, anyway, but any you just complete stranger missions from, you know, the each individual characters. There's ten of them. They're scattered throughout the map. I know Black Bell's one of them. Um, all you have to do is look at the map for those. It'll tell you their name. Um, so just keep track of who you got a mission from. And then you had to complete a thousand of these missions. Back in the beta days, this was all there was to do, so I've got a ton of them completed. <laughs> I probably have more of this completed. I just didn't know you could reset the belt buckles back then. <laughs> Complete four re free roam missions in a day. All you have to do is do four of these. They're really easy to do on your own. And most of them you can do in defensive. It'll tell you if it's an offensive mission or not before you take it. So this one's a little bit more difficult now that there's like more options. Um, as far as stuff that pops up. But... If you use the map that I'll throw in the link here, all you have to do is just complete the hideout. They're good XP and whatever, and um, good practice for kills, and sometimes you can get a treasure map off of looting the bodies. And then, of course, <clears throat> there's this belt buckle here where you can clear so many of them and reset it to get a little bit of gold. Defending campsites. So, campsites are just when you're riding around the map and you see... You know, these guys on horses and they're attacking someone who obviously has a camp set up. Just be mindful that whenever you initiate this, it's going to teleport your entire posse to you when you finish the mission. So just be respectful if you're in a posse with people. Fend off enemy ambushes. So ambushes are whenever you're riding through the map, sometimes enemies can spawn on you in certain ambush locations. Um, look at the map that I'll link um, for the locations. Or if you're finding someone in need, sometimes they'll ask you for a ride or whatever, and then there's like a 20 to 30% chance that it'll spawn an ambush. So if you need both of these belt buckles, they're really good to, um, to like um, do together because sometimes you can get an ambush out of it or you can help someone in need. So it's kind of a win-win. And then lastly, competitive. Posse feuds. So you have to be a posse leader, or whoever is in a posse has to be a posse leader. You just have to be in a posse. And then whoever you're fighting, as far as players go, um, has to be in a posse too. And then you can challenge them to a posse feud. You have to win these. I don't have very many. They're hard to get because a lot of people are cowards and they won't fight you. Or um, <coughs> they'll do it and they'll use E-rounds. So, it can be a little challenging. Winning horse races. I haven't finished this one just because it tests my freaking patience. Um, just because normally, like, it's, there's always that one dickhead in there that just wants to shoot everyone and ruin the race for everyone else. So, I haven't finished these yet because I just... <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me. But if you like the horse races, then by all means... Um, the best strat I can give for this is don't try to, like, kill people. Because sometimes you lose speed when you're ADSing and shit like that. So just be mindful. 
just focus on the race stick as close to um the corners as you can and um you know, uh, keep a good rhythm while you're tapping A. Winning showdowns is really easy if you're not that good at PvP, if you do the team-based ones. Because normally, um, when you're in the showdowns, you'll get on a team with, like, someone who just wants to go for kills so he can keep the enemy team dead while you can go and run the objective. It's pretty easy. Win posse races, that's in the posse infighting. Um, you just do the posse races. Um, for posse races, you can pick where you, um, wherever, you know, the finish line is. So it's, it's just a fun little thing that you can do real easy to do. Uh, win feuds. So feuds are like single player versus single player. Um, if someone kills you or you kill them, they can challenge you to a feud. And then whoever has the most kills wins pretty easy. Uh, first place in Posse Versus. So that's either first place in a race. Um, I think a race does count for this, but I could be wrong. But it'll either be Hunt the Leader, um, Posse Infighting, things like that. It has It's like a, it's like a PvP base for this one, for Posse Versus. And then there's um, this one right here, Posse Contest. So that's going to be like Herb Picking, Biggest Fish um those contests so there's a difference between versus and contests but you have to win 20 of each uh place first second or third in a free room event some of the free room events are really easy to win i'm still working on my wins as you can see but um <clears throat> so like some of them that are pvp or pve based um are like protect legendary animal or a day of reckoning Manhunt, those are all PvE. Basically, you just, or like Trade Route. Trade Route, you just have to get the most killed. Same with um, Protect Legendary Animals. You just have to get the most NPC kills. Um, but, so those are really easy to win. Or the Condor Egg. If you can find the Condor Egg, that's an easy win right there, too. Win five types of free room events. So, it's just different types. Condor Egg... Um, headshot kills, king of the castle, any of that. You just have to win five different ones. Or salvage is PvE too, now that I think about it. You just have to collect stuff. So, the wins are easy if, you know, you find something that you're good at. Stop a rival posse or player from completing their free roam mission. This one's a little bit difficult just because free roam missions aren't really a thing anymore. You might need to find a friend that will volunteer as tribute for you and will pick up an offensive mission. And then you can steal it from them. Or just hope you get lucky in free roam and find someone who is willing to... Um, <laughs> or not so willing to give you their mission. I don't know if the traders count for this because I maxed this out on beta days. First kill and last kill in a shootout correlates to gun rush. You need to get the first kill or the last kill or both in a round of gun rush. You have to do this a hundred times. As you can see, I don't really play gun rush. I think I've played like maybe 10 matches in my entire life. I'm still working on it. I plan to finish this one because these belt buckles look pretty neat. Um, but even if the gun rush is like make it count with a bow or make it count with a tomahawk or throwing knife or whatever. As long as you get the first kill or the last kill or both, it will count for you. Um, so, it, <laughs> it, like I said with this... It's time consuming. I've been playing since online came out. And I still have 17 that I'm still working on. It's not something that'll happen overnight. And it is by far not an easy feat to do. Um, <laughs> it'll definitely test your patience. But I'm... Um, this is my level. I think maybe two-thirds to a third of it is from PvP, and the rest is all just my belt buckle grind. And I've got a lot of money and gold to show for it, so it's something that's definitely worth it, or if you're just an achievement hunter like I am, you'll definitely find some happiness 
or accomplishment with it, but this has been um, something that people have been asking me to do for a while because they want to know my strategy, and so I figured that I would share it just so that way people have something to uh, relay to. But if you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me, and I'll be happy to um, lend any more advice that I have. This is my very first video doing, so I do hope that you enjoy and I thank you for your time.